He who has acquired discrimination knows that God is the only substance and all else is non-existent. With the awakening of this spirit of discrimination, the person wants to know God. On the contrary, if a man loves the unreal such things as creature comforts, name, fame and wealth, then he doesn't want to know God who is of the very nature of reality. <coughs> To discrimination between the real and the unreal, one seeks to know God by turning the mind within oneself. One acquires discrimination, and through discrimination, one thinks of truth. So, discrimination is the most important, strong, first pillar of building spiritual life. The equally important second cardinal pillar is vairagya, dispassion, detachment. People are afraid of vairagya because their mind is not ready to discard what is unreal. That is illusion. But without Vairagya, without this second pillar, you can't build up spirituality. This passion, detachment, is not a negative force. It is tremendous force. It is a positive, tremendous, inspiring force. With detachment, we can be energetic 100%. With non-attachment, your energy level goes to 50 percent. So you can imagine the power of non-attachment. That means identifying yourself totally towards the ideal. That's very important. It is not the same as apathy or being unenthusiastic, depressed are not being interested in everything. Don't call it as detachment. This passion is a lack of feverishness. Be it in what you desire, hope or aspire for. Sri Ramakrishna says in the Gospel, by meditating on God in solitude, the mind acquires knowledge is passion and devotion. But the very same mind goes downwards if it dwells in the world. In the world, there is only one thought. What is that? Lust and gold. Kama Kancha. The whole world is boiling with these two. Kama. Culture. They are the strong baits for the person to bind him on into this world. And they are the cause for all the sufferings. If you realize they are the cause, then it means your eyes of discrimination are open. So we need to practice this passion. Very important. Now the third pillar is the sixth fold virtue. Shamadapadi, Shatsampati, they call it. Shama, the Sanskrit was Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, Titiksha, Shraddha and Samadha. These are the six excellent virtues to be cultivated. Simply by thinking you are spiritual doesn't make you spiritual. You have to, you have to build up a strong effort 
As I said, every pillar is important. Pay attention to all these pillars. Make strong. And nobody need to tell you. Automatically you become strong. All these six qualities are taken as one because they are calculated to bring about mental control and discipline. Without which concentration and meditation are simply impossible. Sitting and closing the eyes is not considered as meditation. It's a posture. So, what is Shama? Shama means calmness. Tranquility. Having the mind under control, that is Shama. Dhamma means control of the senses. <coughs> Generally what we see, we dance according to the tune of the senses. That's the funny part. Though we are supposed to be the master of the senses, we behave like slaves, bonded slaves of the senses. So, you must be courageous and bold, <coughs> firm, strong, stable to control the senses. <coughs> they must behave according to what you want to, not according to what they want you to be. That is the meaning of controlling of the senses. All these things can be done only when you are watchful about yourself. Not wasting your time about seeing outside and taking the dirt of others. Stop looking at others. Look into yourself. Keep on looking. As long as you feel that you should become more and more clear. Then comes Uparati. That is renunciation of activities which are not duties. We are continuously activated, we are continuously engaged in all kinds of activities. No. You must concentrate only on performing your duties. The duties, <coughs> when you do properly, will purify the mind, will make you more and more selfless, compassionate, friendly towards beings, free from egoism. Egoism is the most dirtiest. I should say, thousand red cobra, Adishesha. Everybody is carried away by egoism. What, what a tragedy it is. People get, people get hurt by small, small things. Who oh, is looking at me, he got hurt. He is smiling, he got hurt. Hurt feelings. Terrible hurt feelings. Why? Because of ego. Because you are think you are, you think you are too important. Why should you think that way? Be humble. Be humble. More humble. More and more humble. Like that you should observe yourself. <coughs> 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 mm. <coughs> then comes Titiksha. Titiksha, endurance or forbearance of pairs of opposites, pain and pressure. All sorts of things come. There is no point in simply worrying and worrying and worrying. Forbear. Forbear. Be like anvil. 
You may give thousand hammering, hammering, but hand will not shake. That's the way you have to make your mind strong. You must not be shaken away by either pain or pleasure. They do come on the course of various factors. But with this faculty of Titiksha, you will be able to bear with and practice spirituality in the real sense of the term. <coughs> then comes Shraddha. Shraddha means faith. Faith in the Divine Presence. Faith in the spiritual teachings. And tremendous faith in practicing them. Faith is a very strong guiding force in our spiritual life. Then, the last one of the Shat Sampati, Samadhana. That is perfect concentration, one pointedness of the mind. <coughs> one pointedness of the mind. By constantly practicing, you will be able to acquire this one pointedness. So, that's all about the third pillar. Next comes the fourth pillar, that is Mukshutva. Intense longing for liberation. Now, As I said before, Shama is the serenity or tranquility of mind, which is brought about through the eradication of desires. <coughs> but how to get that quality, how to cultivate that virtue of Shama? So Brahmanji says, have intense love for God and the mind will remain always tranquil and pure. Strive to attain tranquility. Do not give way to inertia, but struggle to gain spiritual calmness. To attain spiritual tranquility, you must keep up a regular practice, even against your inclinations. Sometimes we may not like to sit and meditate, but still we should sit. We must enforce discipline. Discipline is power. Use discipline in a proper way. With the growth of tranquility, a man becomes eager to behold the vision of God. He then delights in singing his glory and meditating upon him more and more. He likes to engage more and more in spiritual activities. He finds a kind of joy and inner peace. The mind is subject to all three gunas. When the sattva becomes established through practice, the mind will always remain tranquil. Whenever you feel a predominance of sattva and your mind is tranquil, engage yourself in the practice of japa and meditation. Sometimes you feel a tremendous joy and inner peace. You feel like calling on God. Use that opportunity. Sit down and do Japa. Spiritual disciplines are practiced to bring purity and tranquility to the mind. If you practice Japa and meditation and the mind still does not become tranquil or if you do not taste joy in God, then what does it mean? It means you may know you are not practicing properly. Swami Sharanaranji used to say, if you practice Japa and meditation regularly, without break for some years, you will see for yourself what will come to pass. 
you see yourself what result comes to pass. Your mind will become pure and you will be absorbed in the thought of God. Then you will be reluctant to leave off meditation even for a single day. There will come an inner tranquility which will fill your heart with joy. So Brahman used to say, as long as a man desires the things of the world, it is not possible for him to have any earnest desire to know God. As long as a child is absorbed in his toys, he forgets his mother. But as soon as he tires of them, he cries for her and is not happy till he sees her. Similarly, when a man tries of the playthings of the world, his heart yearns for God and he struggles with all his mind and will to find him. The desire to live a pure and holy life does not come easily, but know this for certainly. The grace of God is upon all those in whom this desire is awakened. In the world, man receives repeated blows. He suffers much and yet the desire